So I wanted, I wanted to talk about problems that you come across often when you're plein air painting. And there's ways and things that you can do to prepare yourself for these situations so that when you do come out and paint, it makes things easier for you. So two major issues, and I think they're the biggest issues that you face in plein air painting, um, are wind. Wind is a big issue and makes things hard. And uh, bugs, rain, those things obviously make it really difficult. And painting in the shade or the sunlight or dappled light, I guess, and sunlight is really difficult. So uh, when I paint in the books, a lot of times things will get windy and I'll have to try and improvise and pull things together and do different things to make my paper hold still so that I can paint effectively. And this is a problem that comes up a lot. And so I've got tools that I keep in my bag to help me to um, work these problems out. So I'll have a rubber band in my bag so I can wrap that around the base of my paper. Uh, I'll have tape in my bag a lot of times because that'll help even when wind is blowing panels over. I can tape my canvas directly onto my easel and that can help hold it on there um, stronger. So having those things, and it does make your pack heavier. So there's stuff you can do to make it lighter. So taking tape and just taking some of it and wrapping it around a popsicle stick or a pencil, the back of a pencil that you're carrying with you and doing that so that you have a little bit of tape available when these problems come up, especially when you're using paper. Um, there is also some great twisty ties that you can get from Home Depot or another um, department store that's just, um, they're like a giant twisty tie kind of rubber, just like metal rod inside. And those are really helpful for, for securing things um, just of all types onto your easel because they're really um, flexible and really, really useful. So I have one of those in my backpack at all time. Another problem that you can come across in plein air painting is lighting, just where you're going to be setting up to paint your scene. And that can be really difficult because if you want a certain angle, then setting up your easel in a certain direction can be vital to making you paint it quicker and more effectively to not have to look, for example, like far to your right over your shoulder and then look back at your painting and your palette. So facing your scene is really nice and really convenient, but it can also be difficult. So trying not to um, twist your the setup that you have so that your canvas is facing more than a 45 degree angle away from your scene is really helpful. So having it either straight on, so your scene is straight in front of you, so you can reference it just looking straight up and then looking straight back down to reference your scene or just turning 45 degrees is going to make a big difference. Because once you turn 90 degrees, you're looking pretty far over your shoulder and you're not able to look back onto your canvas as easily. Having said that, turning um, and moving around, you're going to want to try and get your painting in the shade because when you go inside, you're in the shade, you're not standing in direct sunlight. So having your painting in direct sunlight when you're plein air painting can um, trick your eye so that the values that you're using become really off. So when you go in the studio, your painting will look really, really dark because outside with really bright sunlight on it, it looks correct but bringing it inside, it'll look dark. So if you are painting in direct sunlight, you need to think about those decisions and push your painting really far to make it lighter than you, it, than you think it would be. Some A trick I like to use um, is just having a larger hat on, which protects me from the sun, but also if I can step in front of my painting, I can get it more into shadow or just having it handy to push, to hold over the top of my painting and that'll put my painting in shadow and I can see, oh, wow, look at that shadow color. That's way darker than I wanted it to be. Um, so I can push more light and more color into that shadow to make it brighter. Uh, a lot of times it's the shadow shapes and things that get messed up and the light, the lights in your painting will as well. And so what happens is your values can get pulled together too close. So you're not going to have that contrast that you want in a really strong plein air painting. 
Um, in this example I have here, I'm painting in dappled light. And dappled light can be really difficult because your values will be shifting in and out depending on if it's in shadow or if it's in light. So painting in dappled light is really, really difficult. And if you're going to pick between painting in the sun or painting in dappled light, I would suggest painting in the sun because you want your canvas to be in a consistent lighting situation without having to deal with um, different values and colors going in and out because it'll just cause a lot of confusion for your eye or just finding a different spot underneath the tree or turning your canvas a little bit so that it's not going to be in a bad situation. So all of those things are um, key to being outside. If you are going to be standing with your painting in the shade, which is a great thing to do, you have to think about what you're wearing and how that's going to be reflecting onto your canvas and changing things. And I talked about that a little bit when I did the planar demonstration for our color lesson two. Um, when I stood closer to the canvas with that bright pink coat, you could see the colors changing. So I had to keep that in mind while I was painting that scene. Um, something else, just like things you can prepare for to make your experience more pleasant is buying a small tube of sunscreen to keep in your bag or a small, really strong bug spray. I've painted in situations where the mosquitoes have been terrible. Um, getting a shirt or even one of those um, mesh net covers to go over your face. It makes it hard um, a little bit, but it's better than trying to swat mosquitoes through your whole painting experience. So think about where you're going to be painting and what things you need to prepare for and go through those items in your head before you head out to paint on the field. So something I often do is mentally before I head out, I just think about how I set up my paint, my paint system and make sure I have everything. So I think in my head, I just close my eyes and I go, okay, I'm gonna set up my tripod and then I'm gonna attach my Pashad box onto my tripod and open that up. I'm gonna put my canvas on my um, plain air Pashad box. I'm gonna squirt paint out. And then it's like, at that point I might be like, oh, I don't have all my colors. And so I have to go in and adjust that. And then it's a lot of times for me, it's paper towels. So I have to think all the way through the process. So I've got my brush and my turpentine. I'm going to wet my turpentine. I'm going to pick up some medium and I am going to paint onto the canvas and then wipe off my paint on my paintbrush. So I just walk myself through those first steps and it helps a lot to be able to um, make sure I have everything with me when I go out in the field. Because the last thing you want to do is forget something. But improvisation is um, a key for planar painting. If you get all the way out somewhere, once I drove an hour to get to Carmel and I got there and realized that I didn't have all my colors, there's always something that you can do. Um, there's almost always things that you can do to still make it a worthwhile experience. So in that experience, I had white and I had a lizard and crimson and phalo green, which was just the brightest, most obnoxious color, but I mixed it with the alizarin crimson and some cab red. And then I was able to use white to shift the value on that and just did value studies. And it was worth the time that I spent the hour I um, had taken to go down there because I was able to uh, play around with some different colors, but also just to do value studies and focus on value instead of having color and things all getting into stuff. Um, one time I forgot my paint altogether, but I had a pencil in my bag and I did some sketches. So just being prepared and is key, but also just being able to improvise can help you a lot when you're out. Playing.